my name's Jeanette Lance Bergen and this is Car Crazy Cheshire. In this week's show, ever wanted to hire a limo? Well, we meet a lottery winner who owns one and find out what really goes on behind those tinted windows. But first, more fun from the Stars and Stripes show. No, they're all the best. They're all the best. This, this is just different. This oh. is a real sort of like showstopper though, isn't it? Yeah, is this what well, brings the crowds in? Well, everyone wants to see nostalgia, don't they? I mean, this is something, it's very, very, it's, a, it's one and only car. Because this is the car that was used in Vegas on the stage. So this is Liberace's car, isn't it? God bless him. That was, this is the very one. Are you a Liberace fan? Oh, no, no, no. We never got that close. No, we, we always kept our distance. In fact, I stayed this side of the water. <laughs> You're still a virgin then, are you? I'm still a virgin, Good. yeah. <laughs> How did you get your hands on this car then? Well, actually, the, the car... I had two cars that, the, that was wanted for a film, uh, which you'll probably see coming along, I don't know, maybe next year. It's a Saudi Arabian film. And I, I had a, a Stutz Laporte, which was built for the Prince of Saudi Arabia, which I bought very tatty and done up, and uh, it was a very special car. Um, they wanted this car, and they wanted another car I had, so we did a swap. So the car stands me at very, very little, and... Uh, so somebody swapped you this car, then? They swapped it, well, it was a studio. They wanted the two cars I had for the film. Right. So I said, well, certainly, you can have them, and uh, I was very pleased, and I think they're very pleased. Do you know what this sort of, have you got any idea then, the sort of valuation of this car? Well, all I can say is if you were to offer me an amount of money now and I thought it was a good amount of money, I should take it. Because when I do want to get rid of it and I sell it, yeah. which I don't think it'll happen in the near future, I don't think it'll happen in my lifetime, but if I do, uh, I would have to take a very much reduced price. Do you ever um, get people who come along with a case of money and say, right, here's the readies. Have you ever had that? Have you noticed anyone coming? No. If you do, point them out to me. Well, keep plugging. <laughs> no, in fact, no. In fact, no money could buy them because there's yeah. too much work's gone into them, and it, it's it's the love of them. I would yeah. not sell the cars. No. I, I, I swap, yes, uh, but I, they're not here no. to be made a you're profit of. Yeah, you're not here. You don't no. you don't buy your cars for the money. You buy it for the love of it and your passion. All these for cars them. have been seen with me. Uh, apart from the, like this one now, we've added this one probably about five years ago. But all the others have been seen with me over the years, so it proves a point. Yeah. That, that if I'm at the show and I've got these cars, I'm going to chat to a lot of people like you and tell you all about them and hope that you're going to enjoy your day <laughs> with the cars. Did Liberace actually drive this as sort of like an everyday car or was it like you said for just on the stage? His little cheek prints are on the seat of this car if you'd like to see them. This was his car. And this is what he drove across to the to the piano to play the tunes. I was I'm I'm laughing at this car because um, in Cheshire this would go down very well, wouldn't it? They all like the flash cars here. Well, you couldn't get much flasher than this, could you? <laughs> no, but I, you, you'd only take this. You've got to remember that there's uh, a mink in the beading. It's mink beading here, and you can't get the car wet. Oh right. It, it is a stage car. Definitely. I mean, it's mink in the, in the wings and uh, you just don't get that wet. Otherwise it would rust and then you would have a proper rust bucket. I'm a bit disappointed there because I was hoping there's a ball this Saturday and I fancy going and I thought maybe you could escort me there, Jim, in this beautiful gold car. I could wear a gold frock, couldn't I? Well, if it's a drive-in ball, I'll be there. And as long as it's covered. And also, uh, <clears throat> I love sparkly things, you know, those yeah. sparkly diamondy things. Well. Um, I'm, I'm looking here at the hubcap here. Yeah. Has it got diamonds in the Well, wheel? yeah, there is. Yeah, they, they, they certainly look like diamonds. I wouldn't have thought that they are really, but 
Uh, they they're, they're, they're supposed to be diamonds. You have the seven You're diamonds. You're just worried, aren't you, in case somebody comes down here with uh, the screwdriver? We keep a very close watch on this. Anyone with screwdrivers around here, we're, we never take our eyes off them. So that gun really is coming in quite useful down at the oh, show, isn't it? Oh, very useful. But you do realise that this is 23.6 karat gold leaf. It's not actual paint. Isn't it? No, these are squares. You can see the squares. Oh, right, yeah. It's I'm actual, quite into my art, so yeah. yeah that's you know, the squares yeah. are stuck on, so it's not, it's not gold paint. And did you do that? Did no, you do no, he, he had that done in the States and all underneath the car is gold leaf. So it, I believe the cost of doing it was a, a very large sum. I wouldn't like to tell these people looking at this car. You have to keep an eye on this, wouldn't you? All these tourists coming down thinking I love a bit of that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, that's yeah. why we have, to, we have to put the rope around. Definitely. We put the rope because, in fact, on the first show we took it to, we did have a, the wing scratch. Right. But somebody actually thought they wanted to check to see if it was gold. So you know you were telling me earlier that you drive all your cars down here. Oh, Did yeah. you actually transport this one down no, to the show? No, no, so you drive, no. What about if it starts raining then? I could start this car if you can drive out to that gate at 30 mile an hour. I wouldn't go any faster and travel from up to London. But what about you were saying it's not really a car to be driven because in case it gets wet? That was, if, and only if the sun is shining, I must say, when I'm driving to London. Right, so say if it was pouring down with rain, we might not have seen this car today. We take these convertibles out. We'll wait for the rain to stop and then we're on our way. Who drove this one down today I did. then? You did. I'm the only so one who driving. So your favourite then, the Lincoln? The li I drove the Lincoln afterwards. Oh, afterwards. So we have to drive this one down first and then go back for the other. So you like all the best ones, don't you? Well, you know where your bread's buttered. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> I, en I enjoy the... We all, actually, all of the cars drive beautiful. Yeah. So they, they, do, they do drive beautiful. Just finally... Um, the the wonderful old cars, you know. People don't realise that all these cars here the money that I've spent on them has been body work. You know, it's not been on the engines. The engines in these cars That's go on fantastic, for, yeah. oh, really and truly, they go on forever and ever. I've, we've only had to do the Edsel over there, that Edsel, we only had to do the head on that one, take the head off that. But apart from that, uh, we've done very, the engines are marvelous. So you can forget about spending money on the engines, gearbox, the back axles. On, on presentation, yes. Right. So you, you may get your body work good and so just finally, have you had a phone call then from the man himself, Mr. Liberace, asking how his car's been doing? Oh, bless my soul, if I had a phone call from him, he'd have to have come through yeah. up above. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. Now back at the main arena, a tank was pulverising the life out of someone's once pride and joy. Now where did I park my red metro? Come on, I've got your short lift, shoplifting again. <laughs> <laughs> well that's not the first time I've been caught by the fuzz before. Listen, you're not really a military policeman, are you Keith? No, what are you I'm down not. here for? I'm here for the crack. I, en I enjoy the enthusiasm and the collecting of mil ex-military vehicles. This particular one is a genuine World War II Jeep. I've seen it on many films. And... Why, why military vehicles though? Are you interested in the war? Yes, and also I was a national serviceman when we all got called up in the 50s. Right. I had to do two years whether you liked it or not. So how much did this little baby cost you? This one, this particular one, cost me in round figures between three and three and a half thousand pounds. Right. That's roughly the average price for a decent Jeep. You can buy rubbish at 2,000, you can go up to six or 7,000 pounds. So would you ever sell it or are you just passionate and you collect and want to keep them and...? That's correct what you said. I don't think I'd like to sell it again unless no. someone likes to give me plenty, plenty. Not unless somebody collection. turns up with the readies. That's correct, <laughs> that's correct. How much do you want? That's correct. <laughs> I don't think I would though, I just end. I'm enthusiastic about the scene. So, I so how many, um, you've got this Jeep, what yes. else have you got? I've got the Chevy next to it, this one. Yep. That's a genuine military police one. And I've also got a Rio, six wheel Rio, and the four in the background there you can see. Right. That's post war. That's post war vehicles. So that's this three is, vehicles. That's three. Three vehicles. And a motorcycle as well. World War II. And are you still collecting? Yes, I think so. Is there anything in particular that you'd love that you haven't got? Um, not really, I'm not. No, I don't. When you think go down so. to the shows, though, do you not? Do, 
vehicles not catch your eye and do you swap or anything like that? Oh yes, certainly do. There's quite a few vehicles that catch your eye. I mean, a venue like this, the Stars and Stripes here, this, what a choice of vehicles you've got here. Right. You can see them all around you. All these military vehicles really turn me on. <laughs> all right then, Keith. Well, don't keep your eye on me too long. People no. think I'm up to no good. Okay then. So thanks a lot and I'll see you later. No problem. Bye. Yeah. Taxi! Oh, are you free? Yeah. You're not really a taxi driver, are you? No, no, I'm uh, I'm from Bolton. Right. Why have you got this car then? Well, I've always had an interest in, uh, in taxi cabs from all over the world. Do you used to be a cabbie? Yeah, I repair them as well. Oh, know, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but but why why American um, taxis? Um, no, like I said uh, before, I have an interest of in taxis all, all over the world, and American, Japanese, and. Um, oh, so so you've got other taxis then, have you? That's right. Yeah. What have you got then? You've got an American one. Uh, Japanese, um, English ones from. A black cab. A black cab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and English ones from 1920s through the 30s, 50s. Do you think, are they collectible? Do you think they'll be worth a lot of money one day? Well, I use them within my business. Do so, you? So, they, you know, they still work for a living. Right. Yeah. Have you ever taken this one out into Manchester then? Have you been flagged down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you get a lot of attention when you drive this about? Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm. Is this your favourite one? Um, no, I like them all. But I think for as a head turner, this one creates the biggest attraction. I love this because this just reminds me of like the Big Apple and shops. Mm. I've been in many um, yellow cab in the States, mm. but always off to the shops. Mm. So how much did this one cost you? It cost me about $3,000, but it was a wreck. I found it in a, in a scrap yard in Cleveland and we brought it across and spent about nine months rebuilding it. Did you, did you go out to the States specifically to buy this? Mm, that's right. Mm, mm. Right, so what, you, you had your others. Is this your latest purchase then? No, I've had this one about eight years now. Right. Yeah. So, but this wasn't your first one then? Oh, no, no, no. I've had um, English taxis. Um, my dad had some before me in the 50s, which we've just kept. So have you it. done all the renovation work on it? Me and my son, yeah. Mm. Right. So what do you think it's worth now? I don't know. Um, probably. Not, it, it, would you ever sell it? No, I think it, I'd hand it down, you know. Yeah, but that's sun, nice yeah. to hear that, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So it really, it, the money's not important. It's no, your love of it right, and your yeah. passion for yeah, them. Yeah, we get a lot of fun out of it as well at weekends like this. You know? Where do you take them at the weekends if you don't come to the show then? Um, it's hard to say, really. I mean, like I said, it works for a living. So, you, haven't, so. you haven't had um, somebody ask you to drive them to their wedding, have you? Yeah, yeah we do that. Yeah? yeah? We do that, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, how much would it be if you could take me to Fifth Avenue, Saks or Bloomingdale's? I'm not fussy. Shall I get in? Yeah, OK. Let's hit the shops. Well, folks, I've enjoyed a mighty fine show today, but lucky old me's found myself my Richard gear, so I'm pulling out with the troops. But if you see my little sister, Jeanette Lance Bergen, you make sure you tell her I love her, and I'll see you real soon. After the break, the lowdown on limos. Oh, look at this, eh? Oh, dearie me, look at this, a Ferrari. Wow, imagine me getting six numbers up on the lottery. I tell you, blimey, Chantel nearly wet herself. She's going to love this. Oh, this will get her going. Yep, no more emptying bins for me. Wait till the lads see this. Me and a Ferrari. Oh, aye, top stuff. Bit of class. <laughs> oh, aye, yeah. Right, well, I've got the cash. I'm going to have it. Let's do it. Oh, the Ferraris. Yeah, mate, these are all right, aren't they? So go on then. How much these Ferraris start from? Honest, mate, I'm not wasting your time. Come in to buy a Ferrari, honestly. Come on, I want to buy a Ferrari. Come on. Come on, mate, what's the matter with you? What's the matter? Hey, I, I want a Ferrari. Hey, hey, mate, hold on a minute. Don't go, don't go. Hey, look at this. Just don't go. Look at that, eh? Ah, hey, that's got your attention, hasn't it? Yeah, now you've changed your tune. 
Well, there's plenty more of that, you know. Won the lottery, didn't I? Eight million in the bank. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what, if you do us a good deal, I might have a Ferrari off you. Yeah? Right. Well, let's talk turkey then. Yep, yeah, she's all mine. I'll tell you what, all I need now is a tow bar and caravan. Oh, I. Come on, baby! Oh, I can't believe it. I've run out of fuel. Where's the knight in shining armour when I need him? Ow! <laughs> Want to wear? I'd love one. <laughs> Mark, I feel like the Queen of Sheba. Do you treat all your ladies like this? Well, you've got to keep up on top of these women, you know, <laughs> don't you? Is that how you pulled your lady, then, with one of uh, these? No, 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 not quite. <laughs> do, you, do you get many celebrities um, hiring this car? Yeah, I mean, you get uh, you get a lot of people like uh, Dwight York, Candy Cole, we've had the uh, Spider at Coronation Street, uh, the Brick Spider? Boats. I wouldn't think he's got the money. Well... It's all a show, isn't it? <laughs> it is See? Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> I couldn't imagine him in a limo. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a nice guy, you know, but uh, it's cheap enough to hire out, you see, so... What, what sort of price, how much would it cost me, say, if I wanted to hire it for the night? If you wanted a night out, average cost is around £220, and that, that'll stay with you all night. Uh, basically, take you to, into Manchester, if you want to go to Manchester, around a few pubs. That's quite good then, isn't it? Because if, say, there's like, I don't know, say there's eight, nine of you, Say there's nine of you, yeah. like 25 quid each, 20, something like that? 25, 22 pound each, yeah. That's cheap, isn't yeah. it? So what started you into this business? It was a joke, really. Uh, one of the lads, we, we hired a limousine out one night and one of the lads says, why don't you buy one for a joke? So I thought, well, I looked at the Automart, local Automart, had a read through it, and there was one in for uh, a quite a reasonable price of like 19,000. Yeah. So I just went ahead and bought one. And then turned and You've up. never looked back since? Never looked back since, no. It was quite, quite an interesting move, really. Seriously, I heard a story, right? Um, Mike Tyson was seeing uh, Naomi Campbell, the model, and he actually had a bed put in the car. And apparently the driver t told us a story that yeah. uh, when they used to stop at the lights, the, the car was rocking. It was, it was rocking. Well, that happens you, quite occasionally. So yeah. you got a few stories like that yeah. to tell me? Oh yeah, there's uh, certain things like that happen. We get all sorts of proposals off uh, fiancés and, and things, you know, proposing for weddings, marriage and and things like that. There's, there's all sorts that happens in the back of one of these. You've got a little divider there at the front of the car. Uh, Do they often ask for that divider yeah, to be shut? Yeah, that's quite a regular thing, especially when there's, you know, like there's four in, two couples, uh, things things do happen. So you're not strict, you don't have to, you don't stipulate that there's no bonking going on? No. <gasps> Did I say that word, bonking? Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Do you think a lot of people hire this car for sort of status symbol? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, as it goes, as, as a level of going to nightclubs and things, when the car's not busy itself, I'll go out, take the lads out. We've never ever paid to get in a nightclub yet. <gasps> For, to, the, to this day, we've always like, you know, been, been let in by the doorman. And, and the girls, up. are they all over the you? girls are crazy. It's just mad. God, it's a tough job, isn't oh, it? Absolutely. Somebody's got to do it. That's, <laughs> the, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> You know that band that uh, sort of copy themselves on the Spice Girls? Yeah, the Brick Girls, yeah. Yeah, tell us about that story. Well, it's funny actually, because we was down at Manchester uh, Piccadilly Hotel, and basically what we did is, there was, there was trying to, uh, there was a function inside, and what they do, they're bluffing their way in. So what they did is, they, they got the limousine, they rolled up outside the, uh, the hotel, and then covered the cells up like they do, ran out of the car, giving everybody a wave. I mean, they got, they're, they're identical. That, that was all in the papers and everything, yes, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. They bluffed their way in with your yeah, limo. Hey, that's yeah. fabulous. Wasn't there a lady who proposed and 
tell me a little bit about that yeah, story? Yeah, the lady who proposed to her husband. What address back. is she at as well? <laughs> I can't tell you that, unfortunately. <laughs> it's confidential information. Uh, but yeah, we've had, we've had uh, a lady in the back proposing to husband, well, husband-to-be, uh, which she was Give dressed. us the picture, yeah. How was she dressed? She was dressed in all lingerie, uh, the suspenders, all the, the bats and everything like, you know. Uh, and it was very interesting to see, obviously. You can have quite a good time in here, but I suppose you have to watch them as well. They must start hanging out the, the sunroof. Uh, sun yeah. this, 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 this Shall car, I have a go now? Hello! <laughs> this car's got two sunroofs, and we once had, uh, had a, some guys, some guys who play big, big rugby players, yeah. and they were climbing out of the sunroof doing 50 mile an hour down the road, which is your carriageway, and they were climbing out and crawling along the top of the roof and jumping in the other sunroof. So, what we've had to do is we've had to seal one of the sunroofs off because of that. Right. No, and, and it's, it's a frightening thought, really. Cause are, are the lads worse than the girls normally? No. The girls are rum girls. It's, uh, I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> well, I've seen it. I mean, I've been there and seen it. And these, the, the girls are a little, tend to be a little bit uh, over, bit wild. overactive. Mark, have you ever had any lottery winners? Uh, we have. I've, I've won the lottery myself. Uh, You've won? Yeah, yeah. There was uh, a syndicate of ten of us who used to work at uh, Park Skip Iron in, in Bollington. And uh, it was it was a bit. I thought it was a bit of a joke actually because I was just going out on the Saturday night, and it was this big syndicate of us. And uh, the, the, one of the guys rang up. He says, uh, "Have you checked your lottery numbers?" He says, "No, why?" He says, "We've won lottery." I went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't spoil me night. I'll see you soon." I thought it was a bit of a joke. So I went round to, the, to the, the couple of guys' houses in the boss's house and we sat down having a brew. And it was right, it was spot on. We won the lottery, but it was the week. There was it was a, a bit of a downer. It was we should have been millionaires really. What had happened is. There was uh, the week that three years ago we, there were 51, 57 winners altogether. Oh, so uh, which, share it. which completely, sh we, yeah, we had to share. Uh, we, we ended up with seventeen thousand each between the ten of us. So you know. What did you do? What did you do with it? Uh, did you go out? I mean, like I always think, I always talk about exactly what I'm going to do if I win the lottery, and I say I'm going to go shopping. Yeah. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. What did you do? Did you go out? I bought a car. What uh, did you buy? Well, we like cars, bought, don't we? Well, no, I bought a uh, Cabriolet, an, R an RS Turbo Cabriolet. Mm, very uh, nice. Just because you know, because it was the yeah, they're a bit quick, aren't they? They move. Yeah, they're a very nice car. Yeah, they move for it pretty well. And then uh, I invested into a shop, then a barber shop in uh, in Macclesfield. Sensible man, this really, isn't it? Because I'd probably just throw it all away on a big diamond yeah. ring. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, I've heard all these saucy stories and I've persuaded Mark to give me a job. Now I'm just going to see if they're all true. In next week's show, we visit the annual dogs, horses, tractors and cars event that is well known as the Cheshire Show. Plus, we take a trip to the most prestigious car company in the world, Rolls-Royce and Bentley at Crewe.